what you're doing right now is you've got the shell casings here, and you said uh, in another state you're not you're not supposed to just be randomly firing your weapon, right? Um, like I said, I worked for a police officer. He's still an officer, and he the, in in the state of Virginia, they're not allowed to fire their weapon without. You know, a re they have to account for every bullet that they Well, that receive. makes me wonder if there's act if the our local sheriff's department even has a ammunition inventory. Yeah. Because you would think that they would have to say, all right, I left here with 12 bullets and I came back with 12 bullets. Right. All right. How, hold that out here a little bit. Now, you say these are 9 millimeters? Yeah. And, uh... I don't know if you can... All right. And a 9 millimeter, it would be very easy for the sheriff to, uh trace this ballistic wise yeah. to know which uh, weapon it came out of so we really don't have any difficulty with determining that so if Sheriff Janice wants to he can find out who produced these bullets and I I told him on the phone when I spoke with him that we had went up the next morning and that we found these shell casings laying all over the road right there where they were parked and on top of the snow mm -hmm. okay and you know, what did he say did he, he go would, look he would check into it Okay. And that was pretty much his answers. And, you know, I, I'm kind of disappointed because everyone seems to have been, you know, really excited about getting a new sheriff and, you know, yeah. making some changes around here. And it, so but far, you're a little concerned that, <laughs> no. So far well, it doesn't look like you said that these, she, Lester, you said these shell casings were still there. Yeah, yeah they're still Right now. Yeah, they're still somewhere right now. How and much you want to bet that they'll be gone very shortly? Yeah, <laughs> probably will. Probably. But uh, you're not going to let these shell casings get out of your hand. No. But you've got them available for the sheriff if he yeah, wants to run ballistics on them. And, and, you know, I let him know that there were more laying up there. Yeah. Um, Do you have any estimate uh, as to how many there might have been? No, no, we didn't count them. I just picked up, like, five of them that was laying there. There was, like, a pile of them there, you know, and, and they come out of them. Probably a clip full, probably nine mm -hmm. or so, you know. Nine millimeter is not a real common weapon. I guess it's common with the police. Yeah. They use the nine well, millimeter. Well, and then in the next day when we went up and when we found these shell casings, about where my car was parked at the stop that night on the side of the road, there was a, a soda bottle, like a Mountain Dew plastic bottle. Mm-hmm. So we didn't we didn't think to look at the time, you know. We were we were still kind of reeling. Were they up there just target practicing, you know, or what? And if they were, they were shooting down the road from the direction traffic comes. Yeah, so, so they, how could, could, that have they been, could have been shooting toward the sawmill. Yeah, you know, yeah, so how could that there is a night duty person, I understand, at the sawmill. Saw saw yep. Would they have been within 500 foot of that sawmill? Mm, that's a little farther. Than okay, that. so they probably weren't in violation of that of the firing. Did you hear anybody say anything about hearing shell uh, shots? Well, no. Uh, uh, we got a buddy that works down there for the meal, and he told us the night watchman said that he heard somebody down there screaming and carrying on that night, you know. And, mm -hmm. and I forget what he did say. He said there was something going on down there. But uh, Did you find anything else? No, nothing, nothing really out of the ordinary. Just, you know, I just figured they was out there shooting their guns at that pop bottle, you know. Yeah target practice or whatever, you know, Which, if they're allowed yeah. to do that or Like whatever. I said, I know in 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 the state in Virginia they're they're not allowed to fire their weapon unless, you know, they're on the range or they have Right. I assume that they have to have, they so, I don't know where the range yeah. is around here, but I assume they have to have a range. Yeah. To practice, you know. Yep. But uh you know, I mean I'm sure that they're not allowed to just practice on the side of a, a forestry road. You know, I mean state forests don't you have to have permits and and all that to even be shooting a gun out there. I mean, that's where people go to hike and, you know, stuff right. like that. So. It could have hit somebody. Well, let, let's go with just one other thought here that uh, these guys, uh, do you think that this might be some sort of spatial place sure, where the girls, they, they take the one, girls? That's one of the rendezvous for the cops. I've seen them down there a number of times. You know, I'm from this county. And Brad Totten, he has a history of messing with, you know, young Well, girls. I have heard that, I've heard that Stillwell was the place to go. Yeah. And uh, this is the first time I've actually had confirmation that Stillwell was a spot, but I assumed it was like in Stillwell Park. Yeah. But you're saying it's actually the... It's on the, the Forestry Service Road. At the, it, it's called Monday Neck, I believe. 
Yeah, it's Monday, Dick. That's what he put on the ticket. Okay. And you know that you know the, the funny thing about it was that they didn't have the lights on or nothing when, until we they saw our lights coming around the curve. So in other words, they you could have hit them. Yeah. You could have run into them. Yeah. Were they close well, enough to have? Well, no. See what they was trying to do. They was trying to keep us from seeing what was going on because he jumped out of his vehicle and ran, you know, at least fifty yards up the road to stop us going like this. Oh. So he said, "Stop the car right there and turn it around and and park." So that's really what caught your attention yes, was he, it he seemed tried, like he was trying to keep you from yes, approaching exactly. the cruiser. He, he tried to keep us from seeing who, who he had down there. When, he, when we came up on him and he came running out and we rolled the window down, that's when he, I heard the girls giggling. You know, mm -hmm. So it was pretty obvious at that point that he was trying to keep us from seeing something that was going on there. And you all <laughs> weren't born yesterday. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> He's a married man, you know. Yeah. Sawton is a married man, you know, why would he have some girl down the Steelwell Road park with her, you know? And another guy, you know, who's supposed to be a cop out of uniform, no no name tag or nothing. Well, the word supposed is a question. That, right. That's the main thing, and you have tra tar targeted in on the main exactly. issue that's there. Exactly. trying to find This out. could have been anybody. Exactly. And that's if it was, then how, how am I going to get any any kind of, you know, I don't, I don't know if you want to say justice out of it, you know, to say, because, I mean, there's like no... Like sexual assault in my book. But yeah. That's sexual assault, because he, you know, he was fond of my girlfriend. Yeah. And, and I got mad about it. Yeah. And they know that, and they kept, you know, they kept pushing the issue, like, we'll just take you to jail. I said, well, take me to jail. I'm not scared of you. Yeah. You know, you I know. mean, and it, it was just, it was the most unprofessional officer that, that I've ever seen. I mean... Like I said, I've, I've been associated with them, you know, for years, and I have never... So you knew what to expect from a professional. Yeah. Yes. And you didn't find that. Not at all. In this experience. Not at all. And the way they spoke to Lester, you know, I just, I, I was shocked, <laughs> you know. Now, you were, but you were in your vehicle, right? Yes. And that, was that a local vehicle? Um, yes. I, okay. I have it registered here. I've used my mother's address. I go back and forth between here and North mm -hmm. Carolina. I spend a week to two weeks here, and I go down there and spend a week or two. I, like, As a matter of fact, she just had gotten back from yeah, down there. Um, you know, I had just came back. And, we were, and I was out of firewood, so I had to bring me down here to talk to Phil because he told me to come down and, and help him out and cut some wood, and he'd give me a load of wood. He'd haul it for me. So that's where we were going. We weren't, you know, out on a back road just right. trying to, you know, cause problems. We got a house. <laughs> like that, you know. So, 